Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. From uh, online that I started playing right after they closed. So Okay, cool. Uh, all all right. right. So what, what, what platform is this played on? Um, this is played, uh, it's a 2-5, five, 500 cap, no limit, and from uh, Global Poker, Okay. So, website. Yep, so 2-5, five, 500, no limit, uh, 500, basically cap buy-in, right? Yep, 100 BB cap. Okay. All right, so Global. Okay. Okay, so the hand starts with a reg who opens to 10. Okay. From what, what position? Uh, MP1. By the way, is this like six-handed or? Uh, no, this is a nine-handed uh, full ring. Okay. So MP1 opens to 10, which is a min raise, right? Right. But that's that's kind of like a standard mm -hmm. open sizing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Two or three X. Yeah. It's usually standard. Okay. Um, so the button, um, who's been on here, uh, but he's kind of a splashy player. He's got 1,500 effective. He flats. Without without thinking, he flats very quickly, so he didn't even think about three betting. That's yeah. something to think about later in the hand. Okay. But, um, and then it folds around to me, and I've got 500 effective in the big blind, and I have ace of spades, king of diamonds, and I decide to three bet to 5750. Is that like the pot button, 5750? Oh. Yeah, it was... Um, well, let's see. It's about it's almost six x. Yeah. So, could be a little bit over the size of the pot. So raise to ten, call, and you go to fifty seven fifty. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And MP one and the button both call. So, I don't know where I saw this, but when I was doing top section work with Conlon back last year over on Crush Live Poker, and Conlon was very up to date on like the very latest high and uh, training stuff that came out of the highest level players and things like that and solvers. When you're at 100 big blinds, you actually get incentivized and you'll see this at like very high levels of online play at 100 big blinds. You actually rate, they actually raise more than that um, from out of position to basically cut the ability for your opponents to set mine. Like you would see crazy raises of like seven, eight, nine X from out of position. It's just something to note um, at a hundred big blinds because it's extremely difficult. Basically, it's a situation where they're almost basically forced to like four better fold almost. Um, but okay, so MP1 and button both call. So the pot is right around, I would say 170-ish, something like that. 175. Okay, yep. Okay, so the flop comes... Ten of hearts, four of clubs, three of clubs. Ten of hearts, four of clubs, three of clubs. Okay. Right. And I have ace of spades, king of diamonds, so I have no clubs in my hand. Yep. Um, I decide to check uh, after some deliberation between c-betting and checking, but I figured out a position against two players, this probably is better as a check. Um, and I would be mixing in, like, aces or kings maybe with a club. Um to balance my range so i check and it ends up checking through so what i would say here is when you when you look at this spot if you had a club in your hand you might play this almost like as a two street like bet bad if you pick up equity like if you had the ace of clubs or the king of clubs and you don't have to bet large like maybe 50 or something like that and then if you were to get one caller, you know, the pot would be like 275 and, you know, you'd have, it's a tricky little hand because you'd have like maybe 400 left. That actually could be even a three street game. You could bet really small, really small, followed up by a jam or small, small, and then like a give up or something like that. When you don't have a club in your hand, this is probably put into, yeah, like a, like a check range. And then, you know, if it goes bet and call, you just fold and then you, you maybe you defend a one bet. If somebody were to come out and bet full pot though, I think that you could probably fold. Like if it got checked over to the button and he bet, you know, 
very large, like over, say, 100 to 125. I'm not exactly sure what you can do, you know? Yeah, I would probably end up just folding. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would probably just fold in yeah. that scenario. Yeah. So ten four three two clubs. Okay, it gets checked through. Right. Yep. And the turn brings the queen of hearts, so it brings another flush draw on the board. Okay. And um, I figured, um, I thought about this. I think this is an interesting decision. I want to know what you think. Um, but I decided to, to bet. Um, I figured this was a pretty good card for my overall range, and I didn't think that I would get raised off my equity essentially Mm -hmm. um but i didn't want to bet too large either and then not have enough behind on the river um right so you're this is a situation where you don't think you're going to get really raised here if you come out and bet and you're going to get folds from pairs right like sevens eights things like that can't really continue on and then you can evaluate what you're going to do uh, I assume basically at the end. I mean, I can I, I can definitely get on board with that. You would think that a fair amount of players would bet off a 10 here for some protection on the flop. So I don't think there's a whole lot of 10x represented, but obviously it's possible somebody could have a queen here too. Yeah, the main uh, player that I was actually worried about was MP1. Mm-hmm. Um, not only because he's a regular and a strong player, but because I thought that his range was um, the most, uncapped because i figured yeah like the button if he had uh, a 10 or even you know like a hand like pocket nines or eight maybe even sevens um front door clubs he's probably betting all most of all those off on the flop Mm -hmm. um but anyway so i decided to bet 77.50 on the turn okay which is like a little over what like a little over third pot yeah and um, MP1 folds, which I which was good, good result. And uh, the button calls. So let me just say something here too. So if you bet the sizing and then MP1 called, and let's say the button folded, and you think that MP1 is decent, if the river is a brick, if MP1 is decent, I don't know if I would jam as a bluff at the end because he should be defending with Queen X and he should have a lot of Queen X here. Uh, when you bet and it gets caught and then he calls, I mean, I guess he could have backdoor hearts and stuff too, but, um, he is obviously, he has to defend to your turn bet very tightly with the guy behind him. Right. So if he were to call your bet and then the button folded, I don't know if I would bluff him, this button guy, you know, maybe it's a little bit different story. I'm just sort of going through the different combinations, but, right. but that doesn't happen. Well, so. yeah. Yeah. MP one. I mean, if he had called you're right because he structures his calling like he's not going to call with like i don't know like a hand like pocket eight if he had that right um he's going to be calling correctly and he's also going to be calling correctly on rivers so i'm not going to really have that great of a chance to bluff him off right but uh he does fold and the button ends up calling right so the pot's like 330 or so now it looks like right right yeah so the river uh, brings the queen of clubs. So front door clubs come in and the queen pairs. Oh, that's interesting. So so the board is ten of hearts, four of clubs, three of clubs. Turn is the queen of hearts. And now the river is the queen of clubs. Correct. And I guess my thought here is, is that, well, obviously this is not a bluff card for you because I, I, I just I don't see really the point here. Um, I mean, I would definitely check. And I guess the question is, is that if you're going to face a large bet here, some of the info that you just gave, it seems to me like you're going to say that you discount flushes, right? Cause you think you would have bet those off on the flop. Yes. Um, maybe not a hundred percent of the time, but like 90% of the time I would assume. Well, the, so I assume you checked. Yes, I, I, I did check. Okay. And what happened? Um, the button, it's, uh, he almost snap moves all in for my remaining 365. 365? Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Let me ask you this question. If the river was an offsuit queen, 
let's say it was like the queen of diamonds, okay? And he moved all in when you checked to him. Would that change anything in your mind here in this decision? It's, t- it's really tough to say. Um, gosh. I mean, here's my thinking. I can get, I understand what you're saying that he probably doesn't have a front door flush, but does he have a queen? I mean, so a lot of times against sort of weaker opponents, we can make hero calls like this because especially when our opponents are in position, the way that they structure Mm -hmm. their betting at the end in position when they can just basically show down is they become inherently very polarized, right? So, you know, let's say, for example, the river was like an offsuit eight. And you checked. So it was 10, 4, 3, queen, rivers, and offsuit 8. And you checked and the guy jammed. I would find that to be, or an 8 of clubs, you know, same difference, right? 8 of clubs, let's say. I would find that to be an easier call with ace-king in a spot like that than possibly here because our opponent's not betting all in with like queen-jack or king-queen when checked to. But the problem here is, is that if he has trip queens, he might. Right? right. So, you know, guys are going to bet trip queens, whereas if the river wasn't a queen, he's going to check back one pair of queens. So I understand what you're saying about having the front door. At the same time, he easily could have a queen here. Now, the question then becomes is that do you think that he would just blast all in here as a bet? And again, kind of going back from the last caller, it can sometimes be valuable to put yourself in the perspective of your opponent, even if he's a weak player and say, Hey, if I was in this particular spot and I had called with a queen and I was facing this action, meaning we have a PFR three better that checks the flop. He bets the turn on a queen. I have a queen. So I call now the river trips the queen and he checks to me. He's most likely not going to have a queen. So am I going to blast all in here? What's his most likely holding? What's the preflop three betters most likely holding here? He doesn't have a queen. Am I going to just basically blast all in here um, for a pot size bet? You know, in 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 poker theory, you're supposed to polarize in that spot. In reality, some guys will do it, sometimes won't. I think it's probably pretty close. I mean, I I, I just I think I can get on board here more with the hero call on a different cl- club river, like the eight or the seven or something like that, as opposed to the queen. What did, what did, what was your thought process, and what did you end up doing? Right. Well, I well I went into the full tank and I went back to pre flop, and he he flatted the min open to ten very quickly without thinking about three betting, and I looked at my hand and I said I've got the ace of spades and the king of diamonds, so it's pretty unlikely that he has ace queen or king queen, mm-hmm. um, and especially like if he had you know ace queen suited king queen suited, maybe even ace queen offsuit, he would maybe even at least think about three betting pre-flop right um so i thought about that i took into consideration the fact i didn't have a heart in my hand and um, well you make a good point too that that i that i just sort of washed over that makes a good point is that you had three bet large pre he's not really supposed to have many offsuit queens um right but you know a lot of rec players will have that anyway so you know, if you look at this and you're like, well, he's going to have more sort of suited hands than offsuit queens in a spot like this. You block ace queen and you block king queen. He might have those hands. We don't think he has a flush. So, you know, if you can find just as many bluffs as just as many value and you're getting two to one, well, excuse me, if you can find um, as long as he doesn't have two times more value. So if he's betting pot size at the end, it's a ratio, right? Like, so let's say, for example, the pot's just even though it's slightly off, you're getting dead two to one. Let's say it's like 360, 330 for you, excuse me, 660, 330 for you to call. Then, you know, you only need to be good one out of three times, which means that he only needs to have a bluff one out of three times for you to call. So, you know, does he have a bluff here 33% of the time? Like, is there enough? Does he only have value two times more? If he's got more value than 2X, then it's a fold. If he's got less, then it's a call. And yeah, looking back at it, when you when you threw bet large here, it probably does cut off a fair amount of his queen x. So what ended up happening? Well, I thought about pre flop, and then I remembered a tip that you've been giving us recently. Um, when someone snap moves in on the river, it's very often a bluff. And is that what he did? That is essentially what happened. Yeah, he he 
almost snap moved all in on the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did end up calling, and I was good. He showed Jack Nine of Diamonds. Jack Nine of Diamonds. So that well, that's a, that's something I wish you had brought up in the beginning of the call. But yeah, definitely like that snap malt move all in is, uh, and it's, it's specifically in this particular spot for the reasons that I talked about. Where if he holds a queen, wouldn't he think about it in terms of a value sizing, right? So that sort right. of, that snap move all in on the river from your opponent in position when you know a card basically changes everything, like changes the nuts a lot. If your opponent doesn't respect that and you don't think that – and the snap – excuse me. If your opponent doesn't respect that and he snap moves all in, that usually will lend itself to a scenario where he's not really thinking of what hands he can have. He's just trying to pull off a bluff basically because if he actually had value, just inherently he would think about it. You know what I mean? Right, and so. I wanted to call in this hand because after the hand I kind of was thinking I was like – was I way out in left field with that call? Like, is he turning, like, some kind of pair into a bluff when I look weak on the river and I'm just going to lose to, like, I don't even know. Like, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be concerned about a pair into a bluff because I think enough players are going to check. I mean, even if I was your opponent in that spot and I was holding on on the turn with, like, nines or something like that, um, I wouldn't bluff the river. What am I trying to bluff you off of? Like, I beat ace-king, right? Like, I beat ace-king and I beat ace-jack. So right. I don't I don't think that you have to be overly worried that you're going to accidentally lose to a hand that's turning in you into a bluff. And I, and I think if you look at the suits of your cards, too, as someone in the live chat pointed out, you have a fairly good candidate, too, because you sort of block a lot of the, the queen X suited, right? You have the ace of spades and the king of diamonds and the queen of hearts and the queen of clubs are out on the board, which means that um, – it's very hard for him to have like suited combos of those hands. If, I mean, he can have some of the king and some of the, cause you just have ace king, but you have one of the best combinations to bluff catch. So I think coupled with the fact that you three bet very large, he shouldn't have that many offsuit queens and the fact that he snap moves all in uh, is, is a good observation for you. And then uh, you made, you ended up making a nice call. So uh, awesome. thanks for the call. Appreciate it. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.